Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hey, good morning. It is Thursday, the 14th of January. We're going to get your Katrina Weber with some breaking news coming up. But first, one of the biggest conventions of the year every year in Las Vegas up until now has been the Consumer Electronics Show, better known as CES. It's virtual this year, and we have our preview of some of the items coming out, and there's definitely a pandemic theme here. Yes, very interesting items. Let's go to, first off, the Bose Sports Open Earbuds, and these are the headphones that do not go in your ears. They go over your ears. They go over your ears, yeah, so they're totally wireless and uh, major redesign. The idea behind the earbuds is that some people don't like having equipment in their ear canals uh, when they're working out. So earbuds that make contact can put pressure on sensitive areas, get sweaty, or just fly out too fast. So for runners and bikers, I can identify headphones that close you off to the world can also be dangerous because you need to be able to hear it. So these, like Mark said, go over your ears uh, and, and cancel out the sounds everywhere. All right. Also, there's a sticker to detect the coronavirus. And then one of the things we want to show you is this weird furry robot thing out of Japan called, we think it's called Kub Kubo. I think it's Kubo. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Gretchen, do we have that video that we can roll of the of the Kubo itself? Okay, gotcha. That's so, not it. <laughs> no, that's not it. That's definitely not it. Uh, but yeah, it, it's this weird thing. It's it's supposed to make you feel less alone. Yeah. So this has uh, it has. There it is. It's like a, there. You, oh, there you go. So it's like a cat without a head or legs or fleas or a soul, according to this article. Uh, yeah, it's a round fuzzy ball uh, with with that moving tail. So very very interesting. And like you know, Mark said, it's supposed to provide owners with comfort. You know, something everyone could probably use more of in 2021. Only 110 bucks. Another thing, big thing coming out as we wrap this up from CES is a new generation Wi-Fi router. It's called Wi-Fi 6E, but these things are pricey. They start at like... Um yeah. Two, let's see, six, six hundred dollars. Yes. And, and they're coming out in the first quarter of this year. Wow. Six hundred dollars. That so, is, yeah. More gadgets coming your way. And again, most of them have something to do with us being cooped up or making lives a little easier during the pandemic. Yeah, I think um, they will. They will sell. They will. <laughs> yeah. For now, let's look at today's nine at nine. Lawmakers continue to move forward now that President Donald Trump has been impeached by the U.S. House for a second time. The president later released a video encouraging his supporters to refrain from any further violence or disruption of Joe Biden's inauguration. Nike says it is pulling financial support from any lawmaker who voted to reject President-elect Joe Biden's win. The sportswear giant says its PAC will no longer support any member of Congress who ignores, quote, principles of democracy. That includes those who voted to decertify the Electoral College results last week. Snapchat says the president will now be permanently banned after initially suspending his account. The company says the decision is based on President Trump's attempts to spread misinformation and incite violence. Airbnb is canceling and blocking reservations in the Washington, D.C. area next week because of security concerns surrounding Joe Biden's inauguration. Impacted guests will get refunds and hosts will be reimbursed at the company's expense. Health officials predicting the U.S. could see a total of 477,000 coronavirus deaths by early February. Meanwhile, CBS of Walgreens preparing for the vaccine rollout, hoping to administer more than 30 million vaccines by summer. Investigators from the World Health Organization are now in Wuhan, China, to help scientists look into the origins of the coronavirus. The visit comes as China reports its first COVID-related death in almost eight months, and new daily cases are at their highest level since July. TikTok says it's making changes aimed at improving online safety of its users under 16. Their accounts will be set to private by default, and the users under 16 can only choose their friends or know it at all to comment on their videos. Starting next month, Costco customers will no longer be able to get some in-store photo services. The retailer says it will close the photo departments in all of its stores on February 14th. That means services like passport photos, photo restoration, and home movie transfers will not be available. Powerball jackpot has now jumped to $640 million after no one won last night's drawing. Meanwhile, Mega Millions is up to $750 million for tomorrow night's drawing. And that's today's 9 at 9.
Let's get to that breaking news. BCSO deputies and SAPD led on a high speed chase early this morning up in Live Oak. The chase appears to have ended in a three vehicle crash on Topper Wine and Sage Oak. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Now, Katrina, what do you know so far? Well, good morning. Yeah, this is uh, the result of a chase that actually started in uh, Northeast Bear County. But what led to it was actually a stolen car. And that car is one of those involved behind me, the white SUV you see here. According to a witness, it was going the wrong way here on Top of Wine Road, hit that other white SUV, and then the black one also became involved. Uh, they do have the driver in custody, although he did run away. Uh, deputies tracked him down in the neighborhood, brought him back. He's getting checked out by paramedics, as are two other people, but it doesn't appear that anyone has serious injuries as far as we know. Now, this did start with a stolen vehicle. As I said, that white SUV was taken from a home in Kirby. Kirby police initially were just following the car, but once it crossed into the Bear County lines, uh, the deputies did get involved, initiated that chase. San Antonio police, it appears, helped with their helicopter, but it was Bear County that was on the ground in pursuit of this car uh, where it then wrecked out. Uh, again, we are still waiting to find out about the severity of the injuries, but we have seen a couple of people walking around getting checked out by the paramedics here, but so far no one that we've seen taken off to the hospital. Uh, the suspect, police, uh, deputies tell us, is underage. He's a child, so uh, they did not want us to take any pictures of him, but uh, he is in custody, getting checked out, and probably going to face several charges. Reporting live in Live Oak, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Taking a look outside with live cam this morning. We're at 46 degrees. We started in the 30s, so warming up a little bit. Yeah, it is warming up. We, we got one big change today, and that's going to be a cold front. That's going to bring some gusty winds with it. So let's take a look at some of the headlines today. Sunny and mild. Uh, it'll turn windy when that front comes through. Uh, we may see some gusts up around 30, 35 miles per hour, so be prepared for that this afternoon. Sunny, cooler, and breezy tomorrow. This weekend will be nice, but we'll see some more clouds, especially on Sunday. Let's look at the numbers. 46 right now in Boulevardy, 44 New Braunfels, 47 Port SA, 40 at Stinson, 42 Hondo. So we are starting to warm up. And by the way, Mountain Cedar jumped back into the high category today. It's around 4,000. And with these winds this afternoon, we'll see what happens with those numbers tomorrow. I'm not too optimistic. Those the temperatures today up to around 68 degrees, and then with that front coming through, we'll see them sort of start, uh, start to fall off this evening, especially, and uh, into the 30s eventually by tomorrow morning. We do have some rain chances in the forecast by next week. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a bit. Guys. Thank you, Justin. In your morning headlines, a huge jump in jobless claims, and a plane crashes into a home's backyard. Am I in the wrong story? Yes. Uh I think we're going to top stories first. All right, top right. stories we are following today. We now know the name of a woman who was killed in her apartment on Highway 90 last Friday. The medical examiner's office has identified her as 65-year-old Michelle Washington Hart. It happened in the 7600 block of Highway 90 East off of Springdale Drive. Homicide detectives began investigating when family members called police saying they haven't been able to contact her. When officers arrived at Washington Hart's apartment, they found her dead with multiple stab wounds. Police tell us no arrests have been made and they're still actively seeking the person responsible. Police are also looking into a rollover crash that happened overnight on the northwest side. Officers tell us so far a woman has been detained under suspicion of DWI. The crash happened around 1045 last night in the 6100 block of Crab Orchard. That's not far from Evers and Wurzbach. Police tell us the woman crashed into another car before rolling her vehicle. There were no injuries in the crash, and it's still not clear if that driver is facing charges. All right now to the story I was just talking about in your morning headlines, a huge jump in jobless claims and a plane crashes into a home's backyard. And awesome video of a snow skier getting caught in an avalanche and swept down a mountainside. Our David Sears is here to explain all of this this morning. Wow, Goodness. David, good if morning. If you are a snow skier, this will get your attention, especially if you like kind of going on the back trails somewhere where there's not a lot of people. Ooh, yeah, wow. that's good stuff. Well, therefore, just a second, but first, there has been a spike in coronavirus cases across the country, and that has caused a spike in the unemployment claims. They went up to 965,000 last week, the most since last August. The shutdown of restaurants, bars, and other businesses in places like California and New York having an impact on those numbers. Prosecutors in Mount Pleasant, Wisconsin, upset with Kyle Rittenhouse and his bond agreement, and they want it more restrictive. 
Rittenhouse is out of jail on a $2 billion bond after he was accused of killing two people during protests and riots in Kenosha, Wisconsin last summer. He is able to go to bars, drink alcohol, and associate with who he wants, and prosecutors want to change that. The district attorney released pictures of Rittenhouse in a bar with his mom back on January 5th. In the pictures, he is wearing a T-shirt with a message using foul language. The prosecutors claim members of the Proud Boys serenaded him with their anthem, and he was seen flashing a sign now considered by some as being racist. The 18-year-old also drank three beers in 90 minutes at the bar. Prosecutors don't want him to be able to consume alcohol or be allowed anywhere where it's served. They want him prohibited from making what some consider racist signs, and they want him not to be able to associate with known white supremacist groups. You are looking at the aftermath of a plane crash. A single engine beachcraft went down in a neighborhood in, Car in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, there was some dense fog in the area at the time of the crash. The plane took off from a small private plane airport outside of Columbia. It crashed about two miles from the airport. One University of South Carolina student said the plane was headed right for his house, but the pilot turned the plane at the last second. The wing clipped the roof of another house. It still landed in that guy's backyard. There was a woman in the house that got clipped. She was not injured. There was a fire, but firefighters were able to get it under control pretty quick. No word on who or how many were on that aircraft or their condition. This is Maurice Curvin along with a buddy on a two hour hike to the perfect spot called No Name. We're in the mountains of Colorado. Curvin described the day as golden. It was a sunny Friday. They even tested the snow and decided it was stable enough for a nice run. They were ready to go. Curvin said he was a little nervous standing on top of the peak cause he said they were taking a risk skiing that particular line. He was right as he was going down the mountain. Look out, an avalanche starts. This is Curvin's helmet cam. In just a second, you see him turn, and there it comes right down at him. He was prepared, though. He pulls out his avalanche airbag. Didn't know there was one that existed, but apparently there is for these kind of situations. He pulls the cord, the avalanche airbag blows up, and then he went working himself to stay above the snow, fighting to stay up there. He was keeping his feet above the snow. He was keeping his head above the snow. He dropped about a thousand vertical feet. And I started to do a backstroke and tried to kick my feet up to stay on top of the snow. You float on the snow easier instead of being sucked down into the washing machine, so-called. And then you'll hear like some bumping. It's like a, being in rapids, essentially, is what it almost looks and felt like. Then you'll hear my board hit the rock and me in the air. That's pretty dang scary right there. Maurice caught in the avalanche and then you'll, yeah, you hear that bumping and, and uh, all that noise in there. That's just, that was something else. He survived. He said his training kept him uh, above the snow and he was able to uh, survive that, but he doesn't recommend that for everybody. <laughs> he said he was pretty lucky. And if you're going to go into the backwoods, you better know what you're doing if you're going to ski those slopes. Obviously, this pandemic has been tough on small businesses. This is a familiar story around the country and even here in San Antonio. We're inside a bakery in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The owner is Ann Benson. She's struggling to stay open. She already went through her first round of PPE, denied the second round. So she was staring right and going out of business until she shared her concerns on Facebook. She didn't really mention her business or who she was, but people figured it all out. Next thing you know, they're lined up trying to buy all her baked goods. I opened the doors at 5.30, and by 7.30 in the morning, I was completely sold out. This is just a positive against all the negative that we've had to deal with. And so for me, it's just one more thing why I love Kenosha. I don't know what my future holds. I'm only saying I'm going to fight as hard as I can to keep those doors open. Once again, uh, folks in the community coming through. We've seen that a lot here in San Antonio. People yeah. struggling and, and, you know, you kind of get a little attention and everybody goes, okay, we'll save you. We'll it, help you out. It's nice so, to see the good. lines of people supporting. It's like, like yeah. the Nestle Toll House plays here locally. Yeah, and the cherry pie looked pretty good too, so. Yeah, it why, did. Why not? <laughs> Thank you, David. All right. right now it is 9, 12, 46 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Kesa is starting a book club this year. Still ahead, Erica Hernandez will explain all you need to know and how you can join. 82nd, or rather 87th Texas legislative session is underway. Alana Rocha with the Tribune will join us later in the newscast. Tell us what we can expect from this year's session. A family in Universal City is carrying on the legacy of their daughter through a new business. Next on GMSA at 9, our Alicia Barrera will join us live to give us an inside look at Red Feather Healing.
915, a family at Universal City is carrying on a legacy of spiritual healing through a new business after their daughter passed away from her fight with breast cancer. Alicia Beretta visited Red Feather Healing to learn more on how the Dexter family has found a way to provide peace and comfort to those in need, all while helping other local small business owners. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, Red Feather Healing actually began as a pop-up shop, and it was ran by Tabitha Dexter, who we'll meet, and her mother, Jerry. And Tabitha always dreamed of having a storefront where she could feature these local vendors to sell products that really helped her in her darkest times. And although Tabitha isn't able to see this reality now, her parents trust that it would probably make her really happy. The, the smell of right. sage, so she, beauty of an array of crystals, yeah, colorful yeah, feathers, yeah, and a variety of spiritual healing accessories and, uh, throughout the brick and mortar all yeah. highlight the essence of its late founder. It's in honor of our daughter Tabitha that passed away uh, in August of 2019 of breast cancer. Say hi, Grief. Tabitha. Oh, hi, Grief. An Air Force veteran and Norse shaman battled with breast cancer twice and found strength in the love of her parents and the wonders of Mother Nature. Why are you looking? at me crazy. When she was at the VA in the hospital, her room was just decked out with salt lamps and gemstones and essential oils and diffusers. But it's the feathers of birds that inspired Tabitha the most after her first visit to a bird rescue in Missouri during her recovery from the reconstruction surgery after her double mastectomy. And she would hold them on her hand and walk the farm with them. And that was um, part of her healing. <laughs> Sorry. It's only been a year and a half since Tabitha passed away peacefully. And in that time, her parents, who were also military veterans, worked to open the doors of Red Feather Healing in Universal City to carry on their daughter's legacy of helping others heal at a soul level. We want it to feel like home. There's always a possibility that you can't save them. But the one thing you can do is honor them. I think that's how people learn to, to find out about their own spirituality and, 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 and live better lives themselves because it's an inward focus now instead of an outward materialistic focus on everything else around them. And although times are uncertain for businesses, the Dexter family decided to go through with this business venture and open their doors just a couple of months ago, September of last year to be exact. And already they've had a lot of success, a lot of clients coming in and they feature some products like gemstone infused candles. Those were really neat to see. Also other heart centered services like chakra balancing and even aura photos. And all of this again is to continue and carry on that legacy of Tabitha of love and healing. Back to you. Well, we're glad they have been successful so far. Thank you, Alicia. Justin joins us now with an update on what is in the air. Mountain Cedar jumped up today, guys. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's where we are. We are in the midst of Mountain Cedar season, and my concern is that the wind is going to pick up out of the north later today into tomorrow, and that may cause Mountain Cedar to go up even more. We'll see. We'll have that new number for you tomorrow sometime around 8 o'clock or so in the morning. We'll I'll let you know via push alert and uh, through the KSAT weather app. Uh, today, yes, it is in the high category. We're watching this frontal boundary here, which is just to our north. This is going to be the one that pushes through later this afternoon. When it does, it's going to kick up those northerly winds, and we could see some gusts up around 30, 35 miles per hour. I think that's possible, but that front sitting just to our north right now, we've got clear skies here across most of South Texas. Look at the winds right now. They're across the Panhandle, 37. Current wind gust in Lubbock, 32 the gust in Abilene, 23 in San Angelo. So that's what we have to look forward to as this front works through. And I, I think, again, we'll get some gusts up there around 30, maybe 35 miles per hour. And that'll be from about 2 to 4 o'clock. It's a small window, but uh, it will be there. And then wind should start to calm as we go into tonight. Outside right now, we've got clear skies. Temperatures 46 at the airport, 40 Stinson, 47 Kelly, 44 at Randolph. And winds are generally pretty light right now. Uh, the low temperatures this morning did get down into the 20s in Kerrville, 31 Port SA, 28 Stinson, 35 here in San Antonio. So not freeze at the airport, but there were several spots that did get down to freezing. And now again, we're back in the 40s. Uh, dew points uh, in the 30s and 40s right now. So the air is pretty dry. And with this northerly wind coming in, it's going to stay dry uh, going into tomorrow. So the rest of today, we'll see those temperatures get up into the mid to upper 60s. But with that front coming through, you'll see the temperatures sort of gradually fall off later this afternoon and especially this evening, eventually back into the 30s by tomorrow morning. Winds will stay a little bit breezy overnight. Let's go long term now 
We've got uh, one storm system that is uh, moving off to the east. That's what's driving the front through. So tomorrow we'll still get some breezy winds here around Texas. And then as we get into the weekend, Saturday looks good. So if you have weekend plans, Saturday's looking awesome. Sunday, uh, there is uh, another little weak front that tries to work through. We will see some moisture trying to return to South Texas. So we may get some clouds, but no rain, I don't think. And even on Monday, probably just some cloud cover. But we'll watch our next low pressure system, which is going to be a cutoff flow out to the west. This is typically a good rain pattern for us. And just looking at the models, there's going to be a lot of available moisture. So if this does pan out, we could see some decent rain. I'm not ready to put those uh, big rain chances in just yet, but I think we have a decent shot Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe next week. So something to watch. And there's a look at the rain chances right now. We have Tuesday and Wednesday at a 30% chance. Extended forecast. We'll go 61 tomorrow, breezy, 65 on Saturday. More cloud Sunday for MLK Day right now. Looks like mostly cloudy skies, mid-60s, really pretty nice. And then uh, some 60s Tuesday and Wednesday with that 30% chance of rain. So nothing overly cold there. We'll see what pans out next week. Uh, we'll certainly take the rain, though, if it comes our way, guys. Yes, we will. Thank you, Justin. Yep. Right now, it is 922, 46 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. This year, we will be starting the Quesa Book Club. Erica Hernandez will join us after the break to talk about how you can participate. Welcome back. This year, GMSA at 9 will be starting the KSAT Book Club. Each month will feature a book by a local or Texas author. And this month's book is called Afghanistan, The Dogs I've Known in Two Wars. Here's more about it from author Dennis Blocker. The book was written for people who love dogs. The book was written for people who want to love dogs and know more about dogs. The book was written also to help people who are canine handlers and it gives you a better appreciation and a deeper look at your handlers and their dogs of how much they give and how much uh, how much they go through in war and how much there's such a great bond between the dogs and uh, the handlers. I had to tell their stories because they couldn't I just wanted people to know that these dogs uh, did a tremendous job in protecting our American uh, military, our Department of Defense personnel, our state per uh, Department of State personnel, protecting contractors and uh, our allies. And our Erica Hernandez joins us now to talk to us more about this book. Good morning, Erica. Hey, guys. Good morning. So this is the first of two books. Do you have to read the first one to know what's going on with the, the rest? No, not at all. It's one of the great things about these the, the books is the first one is based in Iraq, where he was at. This one is in Afghanistan, and it's it's a whole different set of handlers and people involved in it. And it's, it's his story, so you don't have to get his time in Iraq to understand what's going on in Afghanistan. And is there anything the readers should know before they start reading the book? This, it, this is a nonfiction, so this is Dennis's view of what he went through. And it's, uh, you know, some of it's very intense. If you, you know, you get the book, the stories are, are very well told, though, because this is his firsthand experience of what these dogs go through every day in war. And it, it's actually, it's very heartwarming as well, just to see their bond. How can people buy these? So you can get them on Amazon or, or places like that. You have to get it on the book itself's website. It has its own website. It's called the Dogs of Two Wars Store .com. There's a link on our website up right now. Gotcha. And we saw the author here talk a little bit about the dialogue that our viewers can have with the author. Yeah, so our viewers can go on to our website right now into the KSAT Book Club article. And at the bottom, there is a prompt where you can ask him questions while you're reading along throughout the month. And he will be um, available to answer them. and. We'll get those answered right away for you. That's a pretty cool feature. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is there are other recommended readings for this month? Can you tell us about some of those? Yeah. So those who are like the overachiever and want to read more <laughs> than one book. And they're out there. <laughs> and they're out there. <laughs> um, the San Antonio Library has given us a really good list of some books. We have three of them that we mentioned on the website right now. One is called Trust Me by Richard Santos from Austin. Uh, we are the, uh, the Same in the Dark uh, by Julia Herbalin from Fort Worth. It's a fictional thriller. And then another nonfiction called Tall Walls and High 
High Fences, Officers and Offenders, the Texas Prison Story. Um, that's from um, authors up in Huntsville. So those books are on the article and you can click through them and see more about them as well. All right, so that, that's quite of a lengthy list. So it's all there. It's all there, on yes. KSAT.com. Yes, it's all okay. on KSAT.com. All right, we've got some homework to do, Steph. <laughs> a lot of homework. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. The new Case That Explains episodes dives into the mental health crisis created by the pandemic, coming up how to take care of yourself and family members this year. Yesterday, all Texas Democrats in the U.S. House voted to impeach President Donald Trump, but no Texas Republicans joined them. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us to tell us why some of these lawmakers uh, say they cannot support impeachment. Some Texas Republicans say they were outraged by last week's riots at the Capitol, but still they did not vote to impeach the president. And the 87th Texas legislative session is underway. Lawmakers are back with a much heavier security presence. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to tell us what we can expect from this year's session and more. Good morning. Good morning. First off, let's talk about the impeachment. All Texas Democrats in the U.S. House voted to impeach President Donald Trump, but no Texas Republicans joined them. Several of those Republicans did say they were outraged by last week's events, but still not importing, uh, supporting the impeachment. Why not? Uh, varied reasons. Uh, a lot of them thought that the House Democrats were rushing at the same impeachment. Um, you know, others said, you know, we're days out from uh, the president's term ending. Why are we doing this? Um, and, and others said, you know, uh, even Michael McCall, Austin Republican, said, look, my vote today uh, might be on the wrong side of history once the facts come out, but we haven't seen all the facts yet. And so because of that, he felt like he couldn't make a blind uh, vote to impeach the president. Still, many of the members, uh, Republicans and Democrats, uh, spoke from firsthand accounts of being terrified last Wednesday. And so for some, uh, while well, there were 10 Republicans total, none from Texas, uh, that did vote to impeach the president, uh, given his rhetoric uh, and actions to leading up to the insurrection. But uh, no Texas Republicans. We'll see what happens over in the Senate uh, once it goes to trial. And the Texas legislative session started this year with a heavy security presence after last week's riots. And with the still ongoing pandemic, tell us about the feel of the first few days and what we can expect. Sure. Uh, opening day was much more muted than usual. It's a lot of people normally, a lot of family members of those uh, lawmakers to watch them being sworn in, start a session, a lot of pomp. Uh, none of that this time. I mean, family members were allowed to be there, but they were limited. Uh, lawmakers were limited in the number they could invite. Uh, anybody who wanted to come uh, to opening day needed to uh, submit to a COVID test and get a negative result. Uh, speaking with some chiefs of staff, they said that that might have deterred some people from uh, coming out as they normally do. But um, but yeah, they got the state's business done that they normally do on opening day in the House. That meant electing a new speaker, and that was Dave Phelan, a Beaumont Republican, garnered widespread uh, bar bipartisan support there. Uh, over in the Senate yesterday, they passed uh, the rules for that chamber, and one huge one is that they lowered the threshold of the number of votes needed to bring legislation to the floor to 18. Uh, previously, that had been 19, but Republicans lost one seat. Uh, you know, Pete Flores there in your area. And so because of that, the lieutenant governor directed the chamber uh, to lower the threshold so they can continue uh, to control the agenda, essentially. Over in the House, they vote on rules today, and then both chambers are adjourned until January 26th. Asked why, they said, look, we can't bring any bills up really in the first 60 days anyway. Best to be out of the Capitol, back in our districts, and, uh, you know, safe, not cramped in here, especially during the pandemic as we're still trying to iron everything out. Let's switch gears to education now. Remote learning has been difficult for many students and the trip is detailing a story of one Dallas area child up in Frisco ISD who, like other yeah. school children across the state, have experienced mental health issues because of social isolation during the pandemic. Tell us some of the lessons that parents might learn from you guys' story. That it's difficult. Uh, it was difficult beforehand to get children psychiatric services before the pandemic, even more so now up in the, the Frisco area, uh, Cook Children's uh, Medical Center says that they've admitted more children uh, for psychiatric stays uh, since ever before. Uh, so that's very telling. Uh, in addition to telling this intimate story of this 11 year old, our Elias Wabe followed him for some six months, him and his mother uh, through this journey. Uh, but both that story and the separate story is a resource guide as far as numbers to call, you know, what stage your child might be at 
you should call 911 or one of these other 24-hour hotlines uh, and try and, and get them help. But yeah, it's a hard decision, right? You, do you send them back and, and risk exposing them to COVID or keep them home uh, in isolation and, and the mental health can take its own toll? So uh, there feels like there's no good decisions right now for parents, but uh, these guides can definitely help. Yeah, yeah, definitely tough decisions. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Outside with live cam on your Thursday morning, Justin Horn joins us now with kind of a statewide look at current temperatures. Yeah, it's really a pretty nice start to the day. A little chilly out there. Temperatures in the 40s. It'll turn into a fairly nice afternoon, although I'll caution you the winds are really going to pick up later today. We're going to get some gusty winds out of the north temperatures across the state right now in the 40s for the most part. So nothing really cold. That front isn't going to cool us down just a whole lot, but it's it's basically going to be a windmaker. And you see the gusts up there around Lubbock, 37 miles per hour right now. Same in Midland and uh, some gusts up around 23 in San Angelo. So that's what we have to look forward to. I think we can see a few gusts up around 30 here locally later this afternoon. Currently 51 in Holotus, 55 Bernie Stage, 49 Boulevard, 44 in New Braunfels. Clear skies for all of us. And the forecast calls for temperatures up around 68 degrees before they fall off a little bit later today behind that front. Northerly winds 15 to 25, guys. Thank you, Justin. All of us were happy to leave the year 2020 behind, but a brand new year doesn't mean a clean slate when it comes to COVID-19. In this week's episode of Case It Explains, Myra Arthur and RJ Marcus examine how new challenges over the past year to our daily lives are taking a toll on our mental well-being. Good morning. It is, of course, a new year, but same old pandemic, and that is part of the focus reason why we decided to focus on mental health for this episode of Case That Explains. We really dive into the ways that we're so focused on protecting our physical health mm -hmm. over this last year, mm -hmm. uh, but certainly have dealt with a lot of mental health challenges as well. So as we dive deeper into this pandemic in this new year, we're looking at ways we can take care of mind, body and spirit. Yeah, Myra, I think that a lot of us were definitely happy to see 2020 <laughs> kind of go away. But, uh, you know, we're still dealing with a lot of the ramifications and sort of um, oh, yeah. a lot of the outcomes of what we have been going through for the past almost a year now. So I think that this episode kind of explores some of that and also some ways to kind of bring mental health out into the open and to make sure that to let people know that there are support systems locally and there are definitely things to help you if you are maybe going through a little bit of uh, mental health issues or uh, maybe a loved one's going through some of that. Yeah, and I think that we've all experienced this pandemic in very different ways, depending on what your job is, what your family life is like, ways you've had to adjust. But every last one of us has been impacted in some way and having to make drastic changes to life as we mm -hmm. know it mm -hmm. and very quickly, like we all had to do in the spring last year, it's been really tough and it's lasted a very long time with really no end in sight. We do have the vaccine, of course, that's out now giving people some hope, uh, but we know that it's not going to come to an end soon. So we're looking at ways that, again, you can watch out, of course, for your risk of infection, but to take care of your whole self mm -hmm. and ways to do that in a healthy way, because over the course of this pandemic, we've seen substance abuse increase. We've seen people turn to ways to deal with stress and anxiety in, in unhealthy ways. So how can uh, you handle that in a way that's best for you and also kids? Mm -hmm. We don't know what the ramifications long term are going to be on any of us, but especially children. So we're taking a look at ways that parents and kids can really help each other cope. Right through this when so many of our connections have been cut off. Right, and I think that's uh, that's a great point. And one of the takeaways that I had from doing uh, one of the interviews for this episode was that um, we had always kind of had stressors in our lives, but now this is basically a stress that has hit us right in the face. I mean, it is right in front of us. Usually we think about maybe other sort of conflicts that are not in our general purview, but this has really been something that we are dealing with every day, every minute, every hour. So I think that, as you mentioned, those relationships and those family dynamics have sometimes been strained a little bit and just being able to kind of get that out and be able to discuss it in an open forum, I think is going to be key. And uh, moving ahead as we get into uh, the new year and hopefully, um, hopefully get some uh, get some hope back. And as we said, with the vaccine and uh, hopefully we'll be OK. Moving yeah, forward. I mean, one of the biggest things I think is being able to talk about the stress that we're mm -hmm. all living under. And that's something 
uh, that was a big reason for me wanting to do this episode and focus on this topic is I noticed even in my own social circles that we're all talking via text and on the phone right. because we're not seeing each other. So once a friend opened up about this is what I'm going through, I heard another friend say me too. And then this person echoed that and it just, I had no idea that so many people were dealing with this in different ways. So I think it's um, helpful for us all to talk about it and talk about ways in which we can handle that um, the best we can because that's what we're all doing <laughs> throughout this pandemic. So this episode is out now. If you want to check it out, go to ksat.com slash explains. You can also watch it on the KSAT TV app if you have Roku, Amazon Fire, any other streaming uh, service as well. So all the episodes we have ever done throughout all our seasons live there too. We hope you'll check it out. Right now it's 942, 46 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A volcano that has been showing activity since late 2020 has now erupted in Hawaii. After the break, what officials are calling that eruption? Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. You know, with my busy schedule, I really need a good night's sleep, and these bamboo sheets will definitely help with that. Take a look at how soft these are. The Comfort Luxury Sheet Set, it's 1800 thread count. Feels like 100 bucks. Breathable, no matter what the Texas season is. The microfiber and bamboo help with that. They have a deep pocket for extra thick mattresses, and it helps to reduce allergens. They come in seven great colors including white gray aqua and silver you can grab a set for every bedroom in the house retail price is a hundred and nine dollars but the case at deals price is thirty two ninety nine that's a seventy percent discount now you can get this deal and many more at case at deals.com <laughs> I'm really going to read this. Ready? Officials in Hawaii <laughs> calling the surprising lava wow. dome a spasimi ball. <laughs> but it looks like it. It was caught on camera in the crater of Hawaii's Kilauea volcano. The volcano has been showing activity since late 2020 and has formed a crater. Lake lava is entering the lake through a submerged channel, creating a trippy bubbling effect. And yes, it does. That picture, the first one looked like a spicy. Looked like a spicy, a very spicy yeah. meatball. <laughs> <laughs> spicy, also temperature hot, right, Dustin? Yeah. Hey, it gives me heartburn just looking at it. <laughs> uh, 45 degrees right now, guys. Uh, it, it, it's cool, but we're going to see some mild temperatures a little bit later this afternoon. Mostly clear skies at the airport. Calm winds. And uh, we look at the uh, big picture here. We're, we're waiting on a frontal boundary, which right now is just to our north. starting to move into central Texas. Behind this front, some gusty north winds. This will shift through. It's it's going to be a little bit earlier than I think we, we first expected. So maybe around lunchtime, this front's already coming through. And then those uh, gusty winds really pick up. Uh, again, just to our north at this hour. And look at the gusty winds behind it. Gusting 23 in San Angelo, 32 in Abilene. There were some big time winds up across the Panhandle this morning. Don't think our winds will be quite that strong, but gusty nonetheless. We could see some gusts close to 30 miles per hour, I think, as we get to around, say, 4 o'clock. And it'll be those northerly winds. So uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the mountain cedar numbers don't really jump up because of that. Uh, but they could go up tomorrow. We'll, we'll see how it pans out. 52 degrees right now in Holotus, 59 in Bernie Stage, 47 in Comfort, 44 Kerrville, 44 right now in New Braunfels, 51 Kennedy, 48 in Katua. So a few areas around. Uh, South Texas did get down to freezing tomorrow, but obviously we've rebounded pretty nicely. Temperatures will get up close to 70 before we start to taper the numbers down late afternoon and evening behind this front, and then eventually we'll fall back down into the 30s tomorrow morning. Uh, dew point tracker, uh, dew points are low. Nothing to worry about here. This front's coming through with no cloud cover, no rain, because there is no moisture to work with. But as we get into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, look at these dew points in the 60s. That's sort of spring-like. And there's going to be plenty of moisture in the atmosphere by the middle part of next week. So we could potentially see some good rain. It's all going to depend on a track of uh, where the low pressure sets up and where, where it tracks out west. And I'll show you that here in just a second. First, this is the initial area of low pressure that helps pull that front through today. And then as we get into Saturday, everything looks good. Then the little system passes to our north on Sunday. Tries to drop some moisture, but I think it just brings some clouds on Sunday and maybe Monday. It's not until Tuesday that our rain chances really start to kick in as this low cutoff low sets up out west. Now, normally this would be a 
perfect setup for us to get some decent rain. So if it works out this way, we'll be able to up the rain chances uh, as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. But I'm not ready to do that just yet. These cutoff lows are notorious for kind of toying with the models a little bit. Uh, if it does set up there, though, over California and move in our direction, we'll, uh, we'll get some good rain next week, I think. Windy today, 68 degrees, 61 on Friday and breezy. 65 Saturday, Sunday, uh, sunny. So Saturday looks good. Sunday, mostly cloudy skies. And for MLK Day, we'll have mostly cloudy skies, 66. 60s next week, too, with those uh, rain chances. Right now, we have it at a 30% chance, guys. At least we have a chance. Thank yes. you. Right now, it's 950, 46 degrees. We'll be right back. Oh, here we go. Spurs back home after that five-game road trip, going 4-1 and one on that trip, getting ready to take on the Houston Rockets tonight. The new look Houston Rockets are different-looking Houston Rockets. And remember, this game is on TNT. It's on national television tonight, but the first time for the Spurs. So that's at 630. But the Spurs are uh, getting ready to take on a James Harden rocketless team. So James Harden traded yesterday. He went up to uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. He got, and, and wow, good luck. It's like a 12 team deal. Good I'm luck. kidding. I know it wasn't 12 teams. Actually, it, it was four teams yeah. involved in wow. this trade. So, what you're going to see tonight is a Victor Aldipo in the uniform for the Rockets. That's kind of the, the, the player swap. No James Harden, but, and then they got four first round draft picks out of the deal, some second first round draft picks out of the I mean, Houston just like, it, the basket was full when they when they got there. Then they got rid of that guy. So, yeah. you know, who was becoming, you know, a problem child for We were just so, talking yeah. about yesterday. James yesterday so. and I was and I had told I told Max I was like I hadn't seen him in a long time. Yeah. And he was like I was like maybe I'll see him tomorrow. He's like maybe you won't. <laughs> yeah, so so no James Harden tonight, yeah. six thirty tip off. And uh, we'll see if DeMar DeRose is going to come back. He's dealing with uh, an ill father out there in California. I think it's kind of up to him whether or not he wants to play. He was listed as questionable yesterday, so we'll see if he's, if he's back. If not, Lonnie the Walker, the four's got to step up again. All right, go Spurs go. Thank you, David. Go Spurs go. We want to invite you to join us uh, for our virtual middle town hall, uh, middle awareness town hall. It's a hardship millions of Americans live with but have trouble talking about. We'll have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and how you can make a difference. It's Wednesday, the 27th, 2 p.m. More information, ksatcommunity.com. And a real quick look outside with Trans Guide. Things are looking pretty quiet right now at I-10 and Callahan East. Justin? Uh, windy and 60s today, 61 cooler tomorrow. Pretty nice this weekend, chances of rain next week. I really can't complain about the work week. It's only two days for me. <laughs> I mean, here it is Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. And you have the nice weather, too. Yes, we do. Yeah. It is a good-looking forecast. Oh, we still have 30 seconds left? Okay, okay real, cool. real quick. <laughs> so uh, uh, they're bringing back some wine that was up at the mm -hmm. International Space Station. We were telling you about this morning. Real quick, we want to tell you mm -hmm. that the, the, it came back yesterday. They're going to open it at the end of February. And it's going to be tasted by some French wine experts to see what happens after this wine spent a year in orbit, a very nice Bordeaux. In space, wow. yeah. It'll be interesting to see how much it costs, right? <laughs>